So welcome to our college list presentation. My name is Mrs. Bencomo, College and Career Center Specialist at Prospect High School. This is actually one of my favorite topics. I get really excited about um, your journey to college, your life beyond high school. And uh, when you are compiling your college list, it's actually really important because uh, having a good list reduces stress. So this presentation will go over where to begin and what to consider. So, all right. I always really like starting with the facts because when you have that, those tidbits of information, it kind of puts everything else into perspective. So what you, all of you need to know, there's 4,000 colleges in the US. The average acceptance rate is 66% you will be admitted somewhere. So if that is your ultimate goal to go to a four-year school, yes, you will. As long as you make a 2.0, you pass all of your classes with a C or better, there is a school for you. Um, you do not need to attend one of the top 50 schools that are nationally ranked to be successful. So because there's 4,000 schools, broaden your scope beyond those top 50. Um, like I said, if you pass all of your high school classes, you qualify for admission. And then also keep in mind the California community colleges are free for first-time full-time students in our local area for two years because of a community grant. So if finances is a consideration or you do want to attend one of the top 50 but you're not quite there yet you can go to a community college and better prepare yourself um, and then also taking that ACT or SAT are no longer requirements like they used to be to attend all of the schools um, some schools still ask for it but um we're seeing a, a trend where it's not necessary. And, and that's important for California students because locally we haven't been able to test, um, although that's likely to change. All right. Okay, so finding colleges that fit you best begins with self-discovery. And what that means is making note of your interest, your goals, and what's most important to you. So to begin with, let's start with what you know. Um, ask yourself, have you been on a college campus? What did you like and dislike? It's, it's important to make note of what you don't like um, as much as what you do like, because that helps you discern what you are really uh, focused on and what is important to you. So if you've never been on a college campus, then go ahead and plan to visit Santa Clara University, San Jose State, West Valley, and UC Santa Cruz. They're nearby, and those are great schools to visit for the baseline and how you can compare others. Also, take advantage of those virtual college tours for faraway schools. That's the beauty of, um, you know, if we, can highlight a positive of the pandemic, which I hope all of us can reach in and find some positive, is that we have better access to information, especially for schools that are not nearby. And they've made it a lot easier for us to know the schools better virtually. Um, and keep that notebook to record your thoughts and stay organized. Keep an open mind and know the options. So it's easy to be enticed by the idea of attending a renowned college. You know, they're sport champions, um, they make the top ranking list, or they have famous alumni. But I want you to be open to the possibilities that serve you best. Um, visit college search step-by-step, step, and I'm gonna share at the end of this presentation when we open it up to q and I'm gonna share the link to this presentation so that you have all of these links that are embedded um, available to you. So 
You can visit College Search Step by Step, where you can learn about basic college categories and answer questions about your preferences. You'll also find in-depth information about searching for colleges, along with advice from college students and educators. But, um, but have an open mind. And um, the following websites help to understand different attributes, like size, location, selectivity, speci uh, specialties, and even campus culture of colleges and universities. Uh, so these are more great uh, resources for you. And while you are beginning, you need to ask yourself some questions. And, um, you know, this is probably a great time for you to include your parents a little bit. They love being a part of, um, of these decisions. But these are safe questions that you can include them in the beginning parts. You don't want them in every conversation about your college journey because you, you are the one that is going to college. So it's more important what your opinion is. But um, ask yourself these questions to discern your priorities. What am I interested in? How do I spend my free time? What do I feel passionate about? Um, how do I learn best? What do I think I want to do in the future? You know, those are really big questions and I'm not going to try to interpret them for you um, because it's personal. So you try to interpret that, but this is why it's a, this is a nice, safe conversation to have with your parent because they know you really well or even a caring adult. And um, I do want to say, if you are like, oh gosh, I'm not passionate about anything that I can think of, that's okay. This is why we go to college. We go to college to become educated, to become well-rounded. So you're going to be introduced to a lot of different subjects and you might find that spark then. You are 16, 17 years old. You do not need to know what you want to do for the rest of your life at this red hot minute. So um, give yourself a break and don't stress out about that. Decide what matters most to you. For some students, sports and activities are very important. Other students want a challenging academic environment. Look at the answers to the questions in step three. Uh, what do they say about you and what you may like in a college? And then you search for the colleges. So use college search to find colleges that match your preference. Search for colleges by location, majors, size, and more. There's guidance to help you along the way. Also, I really like O's List. College Express is a great resource for uh, college searches. Naviance, that's what our school uses. This is a great way for you to become familiar with the tool that, that you already have access to because you can also do career searches and ask yourself those, um, those career quizzes and um, surveys that they have to maybe you have a hidden talent that you, you weren't aware of. But you can use Naviance and um, some student recommendations are these links, which are the Students Review and Data USA. All right, so um, you want to add colleges to your list and be organized. So after you do the searches, remember to always be organized and take those notes. If, if there's a school that may have been on your list, but you find out that, oh, you know, it may not be a right fit or they don't have this, remove it and, and be organized so that you know that you removed it and you remember why. So check out individual profiles of colleges that come up on your college search results. When you see a college you like, click add to list to save it to a favorites list. Can return to it later and refine your list as you go along. Create a spreadsheet and I have a spreadsheet already for you that will be on the resources page so you don't necessarily have to create one. 
but create a spreadsheet for all the colleges you're considering. The spreadsheet should include information on each college you've visited or researched, including size, top major, and other programs, admission requirements, and deadlines, and whether the school's admission requirements uh, make a match for you. And we're more on that later. We can uh, you can later add columns to check off when you submitted an application or teacher recommendations and other requirements. Being organized can reduce stress levels for you and your family. It helps keep track of all your research and allows you and your family to compartmentalize the college search experience a bit. Uh, set this, and this is actually a great tip. Set a specific time every week to check in with your parents or caring adults to give status updates. Then leave the subject alone for the rest of the week. You're already stressed about applying to college and all the work involved. Do not add to it by talking about it incessantly. And what I mean by that is, you know, as a parent, I can tell you, I could talk about college every day with my children. Um, have you applied? What is the status? Have you heard from the schools? If you don't set up a, a day and time of the week now um, and, and kind of set those boundaries, it it will probably come to a point where um, you're at your wit's end. But if you set up a time like once a week, oh, okay, like Sunday morning, we'll go for a walk or a Saturday afternoon, we'll go grab coffee at some place or, you know, or make a nice lunch for ourselves. And that's the one day out of the week that you set aside for your parents or caring adults to ask questions and for you to give updates. Um, I've seen other families do this in the past. I've actually even written notes so that students can show to their families. Uh, the parents and the students come back to me every year and say, you know what, that worked out really well because um, the student and the parent looked forward to that time together and it was productive conversations. So um, that's a big tip of advice for, um, for me, and if you use it, let me know how it goes. All right, so categorize colleges by match. So a bit more on match. Determining whether a particular college is a dream, target, or a likely school for you is about the numbers. So while researching colleges, you will learn the, the college's admission rates and the medium GPAs and SA and ACT scores to help you determine the chances of admission. Now, because testing is not necessary and is a bit erratic, you, you may find yourself not testing at all and but looking at colleges and they list those test results. So just guesstimate uh, what your SAT score would be. They have charts online that say, if your GPA is this, it's more likely that your SAT would be this. So I think a 1200 score for a 325, maybe a 3.5 is a pretty good reference and go up or lower based on that. Um, if you have a 3.0, maybe an 1100. If you have a 4.0, well, I mean, don't put 1,600, but I mean, you could put 1,500. I think that's more reasonable. So, um, and I only say use that if the college search um, tool that you're using is asking for testing and you feel like you need to put something in. Your college list should be about 10 schools and include an even mix of dream, target, and likely schools. While any school that admits only a small percentage of applicants is considered a dream school for everyone, and that would be Ivy League schools or other schools that have a 15 or 10% acceptance rate. 
it's important to categorize the schools on your list in terms of your GPA and how you fit into that match. A college should be considered a dream if your GPA is at the lower end or below what the college typically accepts. If your GPA aligns with that of the accepted students, it's a target school. A likely school is one that accepts a high percentage of applicants and or one uh, for your GPA makes you well qualified. So for example, um, Arizona State University, they have a high acceptance rate and that's because their philosophy is about access to education. It's a great school. They have a high acceptance rate. They also will accept students with a lower GPA. So that school is an example of a likely school. Then if you look at Harvard, well, you might have a 4.5, uh, which makes you a strong candidate, but the school has a low acceptance rate. So it's still a dream school. Um, and if you need help with that later when you're compiling your list, I'm always healthy, happy to help you sort through that. And so our, our um, qualified volunteers like Mrs. Um, Kubrick. Do not hesitate to include schools that are obvious dream schools, um, particularly if they would be a good fit. So many selective colleges consider non-numerical factors like activities and accomplishments when making admission decisions. Just be sure that your college list is about one-third dream schools, one-third target, and one-third likely. Otherwise, you risk ending up with zero acceptance letters despite doing so much hard work to apply. Prioritize your list by fit. So we just talked about match, which is pretty much, you know, matching the numbers, GPA, test scores, if you have it, or the guesstimate of test scores. But fit is the most important. So talking to friends and relatives, spending time on college websites, search websites, envisioning life in college and in-person or online visits can all help you start to determine what appeals in terms of fit and create a preliminary college list. It's okay if your initial list is long. Um, it's great if you're interested in a lot of schools. You can narrow down the list by asking yourself questions about fit. Like, um, do you wanna stay close to home for college or go across the country? Um, and I love that question, especially right now after spending a year pretty much at home with everyone. So um, I'm fascinated to see a college list after, after this. So do you wanna stay close to home or do you, are you ready to be far away? How often do you want to be able to come home? You know, maybe for the weekends to do laundry or only on holidays. And that's actually important because um, you may not have the option to, to come home for Thanksgiving, for example, because of the different flights you have to take to get back to San Jose. So that's something to consider. Are you looking for a small campus or a large university? Does this school have interesting sounding classes and subjects you're considering majoring in? Are certain sports, clubs, or activities must have for you? And that would include diversity. Our students are specifically looking for diversity. And I love that. They, they see that Prospect is diverse and they are looking for similar environments in the college they want to attend. It's crucial to understand the difference between match and fit. Match involves concrete quantitative factors like do my test scores and GPA fall in the range of what this college accepts. Fit is more personal and involves factors like geography, school size, and class size. Fit includes a sense of belonging. Are there people at the school who look like me? Do you know if I'll need academic support? 
Is it something the college offers? Um, Fit ultimately means that when you step onto the campus, you're going to feel that you're in the right place. A college may be a good match, but a poor fit. And if this is something, uh, and that's something only you can decide. Okay, this is a tough um, subject for a lot of you, um, but it has to be done. You have to talk about money, and um, and that is either with your parents or caring adults to um, to understand where you stand in this decision. So, a college education is expensive. However, tuition alone shouldn't automatically rule a specific college out because it. Maybe that a school gives a lot of financial aid or you may qualify for scholarships. At this point, it's time to talk about your resources as a family. How much you um, or your parents able to pay and how much debt are you willing to take on? The earlier you talk about this, the earlier you can apply for scholarships and um, be looking for different ways to economize. So, um, you know, it's, it's absolutely true that this is your education. So make sure you understand how much it's going to cost. And if your parents are like, don't worry about it, it's our gift, make sure you say thank you because that's a huge gift. And, um, and if your parents are like, no, this is all on you, then you can also say, thank you. I'm glad I know. And let's start, what can we do to make sure that um, I make this transition easier? And um, so there's ways to prepare for that. So many students only apply to state colleges and universities uh, because they and their parents assume that private colleges will be too expensive. In fact, many private schools have large endowments and offer generous scholarships based on merit and need. So it's a good idea to include both types of schools on your college list. If a school offers minimum financial aid or if it's across the country and your family's budget makes airfare prohibitive, for example, then maybe you shouldn't include it on your list. Having these discussions before your college list is finalized will prevent wasted effort now and um, disappointment later on. So definitely have the conversation beforehand. I've talked to other students who apply to college, they get excited about their acceptances, and then they find out that uh, their parents are like, mm, no, this is all on you. And so they have to. Um, quickly reevaluate what their priorities are in the, in the decisions. So what do you do now? So making sure that every school on your list is a good fit means you're, you're be less stressed out and potentially disappointed when college admission decisions are sent out. And remember, you can only attend one school. So if you have a list of 10 schools, which is what's recommended, out of that 10, if you're admitted to one, that's perfect because you can only go to one. Uh, sometimes I see students so worried about being admitted to schools that they apply to 60. That's not necessary because even if you apply to 60, you can still only attend one. And then, you know, make that decision. Are, is it likely that I will be accepted to at least a couple of these schools? Will I be happy if that's the school I'm accepted to? If you can say yes, then you have a good list. And, um, but always dream, make sure that you stretch yourself because you don't, at the same time, you don't wanna go, oh, I got into every school. I wish I had had this, uh, this dream school on my list. Um, so for more about searching for colleges, give a resource. And for more about building your college list, you can download that resource. Thank you. And then I have this others. So I am actually